Hey YouTube people, OG Silver back here. Hey, so as the title of this video says, I want to talk to you about evolution and specifically the evolution of a psychopath. The reason this is important is it leads into a couple of the videos I've made on how women um, destroy our civilization, demasculate men. So you have a nut, uh, you have a healthy male, and I'm not talking about he's got, um, not saying deficiencies, but he's got a tendency to be like gay or free. I'm talking about a man who normally appreciates the company of women, appreciates the dominance and power he has when you penetrate a woman. You penetrate deep into her body and you dominate her. You look down at her and you are the king of her. And her juices are exploding all over you, and she's knowing he's a fucking man. I'm talking about those kind of men. The way that you evolve into a psychopath is early on, uh, you're growing up in a woman dominated society where you very quickly learn as a little boy oh, girls can hit you and say mean things to you, but you can't do the same thing back. And I saw something really strange. I was at a judo tournament a couple of weeks ago and I bring them now it just came to me but we were sitting there and this one girl kept hitting this other um, guy they happened to be in, at the school that I go to a judo school and she just kept punching him and punching him and then the little dude goes hey man like you're punching me kind of hard I'm gonna punch you back you know what she had the boss to say oh boys can't hit girls but girls can hit girls and it just hit me when I was a kid, like I was chastised a lot because, you know, little girls would hit me and I'd hit them back and go, hey, you can't hit little girls. Go, hey, man, she hit me. She said, don't, you can't hit girls. So you're growing up with that type of um, very apparent unfairness. And then as you start going into schools, you know, little boys, you know, during, uh, we used to have these, like, break time, you know, and you can just run and play and scream and jump, you know. But I think they eliminated that from school. Like some schools even eliminate PE, and the little boys just sit there all antsy. And the teacher wants to pick on the little boy. So something's wrong, and he's got ADHD. ADHD or ADHD, whatever it is, and they want to put him on retina. He's penalized for being a boy. So here I'm just walking through the stages of a man's life, as a, of a boy's life, as he grows from little boy into pre pubescence into puberty, right? So then let's just say you hit the 10, 11, 12 year range where you're starting to notice girls, you're getting hair on your nuts, you're starting to have wet dreams on nocturnal emissions. But then you notice there's an inequity there, like the younger girls, like older boys who are more maybe developed than you physically and maybe mentally and emotionally. And so then you, you become uh, outcast and, you know, you be treated like a leper outside society. But then you have these desires from your testosterone. And the hot girls ignore you and the, because you're not a cool kid. And this helps you go home, man, and you see all these videos on TV of people having sex. And you watch music videos, you watch movies. And, all the cool guys are having sex. Everybody's having sex with you. So then you start to get angry, you know. And I've seen that video about the one kid who went into the, uh, he went to either the high school or the college and shot everybody the fuck up, man. There's been a lot more of that. And you have guys like Ted Bundy, man, you know, and Son of Sam. Now, for all you folks out there who, haven't experienced violence and maybe you were a cool kid or maybe you were a duck or whatever the fuck you were you don't know what it's like to be a geek or a nerd or an outcast you know undeveloped ungangly uncoordinated guy you don't know what the guy goes through in his head fortunately for me I was that guy I had I had a disease when I was a kid and I was I didn't grow I was undeveloped uncoordinated sick all the time weak but then when I hit 14, I outgrew that, and I had a growth spurt, and I became a jock. So now I was able to fit in with the cool kids and the jocks, but before that, I knew what it was like. But I still kept in touch with my uncle friends. 
I still game with them. I still skateboard with them. I still read comic books with them. You know, and then when it was time to go practice for my sport or whatever or go to a game, I'd invite them, but sometimes they didn't fit into those circles, but they were still my friends. But I knew what the mentors were. And you question yourself and you, you ask yourself all kind of questions and you doubt yourself. And so what happens is you end up being one of those kids that goes into like the middle school or the high school or the college and shoots everybody the fuck up because you're so despondent, man. You feel so rejected and you're just fed up and frustrated, man. You want to lash out. You no longer want to feel the pain yourself. You want to lash out at society, the fucking hot girls, the fucking jocks who disrespect you in public, the fucking cool kids who just don't even acknowledge you. You know, all this. Everybody's so fucking cool until right before they die. Then all of a sudden, you're the best. I'm like, hey, man, you know, I've always liked you, Fred. I remember that time when I knocked the milk out of your hand, man? I gave you a napkin, man, remember? Yeah. That's why I got a bullet with your name on it. So that's the evolution of a psychopath. The media. The media pushes sex all through products. Sex sells. All kind of products. Even products you don't think are sexual. There's some kind of sexual connotation or innuendo or subliminal suggestion behind it. You know, If you look at all the fucking music videos, it doesn't matter if it's from black kids or white kids or... Asian kids or even Indian kids or, or Arabic kids or Hispanic kids. There's all there's always some sexual innuendos in there where women are objectified as sex objects, something to be desired, you know, to help you relieve your stress and to express your manliness, right? But then the young girls don't want to give you sex if you don't meet a certain criteria of what's cool or what's in or what's what what's hip or what's now, what's fresh, you know. So it's, uh, it's just a frustrating time for, for males, man. And if you're not part of the cool crowd or the click crowd or some kind of click where you, you're esteemed in society, you can have a rough go at it, man. So I'm just asking that all you guys who are jocks or cool kids or bad boys, whatever, you know, have some pity on your fellow man. You know, instead of you showing pity to these whores, these weak whores who are just going to fucking be a fucking sperm um, receptacle for you just because of who you are why should you have pity for a whore because once you lose your superstar status or your big jock status or your tough dude status or your you know my daddy's got money status or you know I come from rich family status or you know I'm connected once you lose that status women are fair weather friends let me tell you but a little geek dude a little nerdy dude will be your friend forever because he understands loyalty. He understands and appreciates you know, having real people in his life. So look at that. That's how we were corrected. If you want to look to women to correct it, anytime you look to a woman to correct anything, that's a losing battle, man. Because the way that they rationalize in their fucking brains how they think about stuff, what's fair and what's right, is based on their emotions. So the same emotions I have and the same thought process I have if a dude cuts me off on the freeway, like I was driving the other day, coming from a powerlifting meet, and I'm in the fast lane, I'm going pretty fast, you know, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not going to speed limit, I'm going over. That's what I'm saying, I'm going pretty fast. So then there's a lane right here, this dude was going, like right above the speed limit, the speed limit was 65, he's doing about 70, because I was doing 85. So then here's this dude in the right lane, he feels like everybody's going too slow for him, so on the third lane to the right, he goes, and dude, I could have sworn there was not enough room. And then he cuts over in front of these other two cars and then speeds up. So this dude that he did that to, I mean, it was a near accident, man. Dude gets mad, they start playing this road rage on the fucking freeway. But the point I'm making is the same, the same thoughts or actions I would make after a person has cut me off like that in a near-death situation are not going to be the same thoughts or actions I'm going to have when I'm in the hot tub with a hot girl stroking my fucking cock. That's all I'm saying. So if me, a rational male, an alpha male, beast of a man, a philosopher and a scholar and a businessman can admit that when I'm emotional my decisions and actions are not the same, then how the fuck do you expect a woman who's 
Her very life is her emotions. Women live in the now, how happy you make them feel. If whether they're in a period, they're premenstruating, whether they got a promotion at work or somebody bought them something. All their, all their thoughts are based on emotions. So don't have pity on her, have pity on your fellow man. And help men to become the great tribe we once were. But we had a collective consciousness where we looked out for each other. We even looked out for the weak men. Stop taking that same compassion and giving it to whores. And giving it back to your fellow men. Now if you like this type of dialogue, man, you want to have your mind open. So you can have respect for your fellow man. And understand women's place. Then you fucking like my video. And you fucking share it, man. And watch it over and over again. Take some fucking notes. And then subscribe to my fucking channel. Until next time, OG7 back out and keeping it real.